This is the beauty of Instax right here. You've got physical prints, things you can keep forever. I mean, you just got a stack here. And the beauty of this is you can just look at it all the time, you know? Whenever you have a moment, you wanna look at your images, you can just pull out your box and look through. And I have so many cool things here. This wasn't all shot with this camera, but I've got really cool stuff here from previous trip. I mean, for example, look at this. This is a portrait Albert took of me. I think you've already seen this on YouTube here before. But this was taken with the Lugmography Lomograph Lock Instant back on an actual 4x5 kind of standard camera. It's just amazing. Looking at prints is such a fun activity. And I feel like most people aren't even aware of that. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about this right here. This is my modded Polaroid 110A that uses the Lomography Lomograph Lock Instant back. That's a mouthful. Basically, this is an old school Polaroid camera that was used with Polaroid peel apart film that's been converted to deliver images on Instax wide film. How do you do that? Well, that's where the magic is. I actually have a homie, Albert, who you've seen on this channel before, and the guy's a whiz. And basically, he, on his own, took one of these cameras. In fact, he started with the 110B model and started messing around with it. A couple things he had to do. One, he had to print an actual adapter that would allow the Lomography Lomograph Lock back to actually attach itself to the Polaroid 110 camera. And then after that, he had to calibrate the rangefinder in order to be usable on this camera. And then he also had to reset the infinity mark on the actual meter there as well. So a couple pretty important steps that are required for you to use this camera, but the result is fantastic. It's basically a fully handheld 4x5 instant camera and it's amazing. You literally don't need anything else to use this camera. You don't need a tripod, you don't need to remove anything. You just pick up this camera, you hold it to your eye, and you go ahead and, you know, take your shot. So I absolutely love this camera, and Albert gifted this to me so generously, and I've been using it a bunch since, and I plan on using this forever. The beauty of this camera is that Instax wide film doesn't seem to be disappearing. You know, we've got all these issues with film stocks being discontinued, and film prices going up, it seems like the Instax market is probably one of the most secure markets when it comes to film availability. I haven't heard anybody complain about not being able to find Instax film, for example, whether it's the square, or the mini, or the wide. So that's amazing. You can use this camera with that film, and you can feel pretty secure about being able to do that over and over again. And of course, it's significantly cheaper than the you know FP100 film and the, the variants that exist. That film is obviously not being made anymore, and because of that, the price has skyrocketed. Every time you go on Instagram and you see me or anybody else take a shot with that film, that means the price has gone up a little fraction. And that happens over and over and over again until there is no more. All right, so let's actually dive into the camera and take a closer look. All right, so let's give you a tour of this camera. As you can see, this thing's pretty chunky. It's nice and big. Um, you definitely need two hands to hold this, although you do have this strap right here. So just to show you, you can just put your hand in here and you could theoretically hold the camera like this if you wanted to, but it sags a lot from right here. So it's not really ideal. And then of course, once you open it, you're gonna need both hands to hold it. So let me actually show you that right now. So you press that to reveal it and then there you go. It opens up kind of like a Graflex, if you've ever used one of those con graphic cameras. Um, and then basically, once you open it, in here you've got a little lock, so you gotta pull this forward. It's a little difficult because it's kind of trapped in there, but once you pull it forward, it comes out nice and easy, and then it clicks all the way at the end there. So that's basically the setup. And like I said, if you want to hold it, you need both hands because you can put one hand in here, but then to actually trigger, which is right here for the shutter, you press that down, you need both hands. So you can't really operate without it. And of course, you see here, the beast. That's, well, that's not me, but that's the camera. It's the name given to it by its creator, Albert. So just a couple more things about this camera. You've got your lens right here, and it has a really beautiful lens cover right there, Polaroid 110A with that classic retro font and all that. It's just, this camera is so beautiful. So to open it, you just lift that cover up, and then you've got your lens up here where everything is triggered. You've got your shutter speed, aperture. You cock your shutter as well by pulling that down. And then, of course, you've got bellows right here. And the bellows are really amazing because they just give this camera a fantastic retro look. And the bellows are what allow you to have that kind of 4x5 coverage on a package like this. This is basically a 4x5 camera. Although the original Polaroid film I don't think was technically 4x5, but you know, it's basically in that realm. So let's close this. And then I'll give you a tour of the back. So pull this down and push it down. And then typical, you push this down here to release. And then you can 
push down. And there you go. It's probably a little more forceful than I wanted, but it is what it is. But yeah, beautiful camera. This one has a really cool gray color. And here's the back. So this whole kind of contraption plus this is what's required to make this Instax possible. Um, the thing here that says the beast that I already showed you, this is actually the 3D printed piece and it basically serves as an adapter where you remove the legacy, kind of the original back that was on this, take that off entirely and then this adapter was 3D printed specific to the form factor of this camera. And then of course to have a graph lock receiving end to attach this lamography back. So it's a pretty amazing concept. I didn't design this of course, my friend Albert did like I said. And he's got the, the engineering skills required to actually design this bracket first, then obviously print it and print it to the scale and kind of the configuration where you can snugly fit the graph lock back. And we've talked about the graph lock back. I'll put a couple videos up in the corner up there where you can see it in action. But the graph lock back very simply just allows you to use the Instax wide film on this format and it'll handle the processing for you. You press the button here on the side, it'll shoot the film out and you've got your image. So that's it, very straightforward. One thing I didn't talk about though, which I will mention right now is this right here. This is your range finder and it's coupled to the lens. So when you open this camera and you turn this right here, that actually moves um, the lens board forward and backward. And that's what allows you to get focus. So on the right side here, you've got a window that says range on it and that's for your range finder. And on the left side, you've got a window that says view, and that's the actual composition. So if you look through the range one, you're gonna get a much more zoomed in view. And that's actually gonna show you the two patches kind of aligning just like that, as you typically would expect with a range finder. And then once you compose on the range finder, then you look at the view and that's how you kind of configure your composition. Once you got your composition, you're ready to take an image. What makes this setup amazing is honestly the lens that you see right here. And this lens basically is a four by five coverage style lens. So you get a really big image, you know, really large uh, negative if you were shooting on negative film. And it's amazing, it's sharp, you know, it has a bunch of functionalities in terms of shutter speeds. And the aperture is quite, you know, open for a four by five lens. I feel like typically four by five lenses have an aperture of 4.5, 4.7 or something like that. I'm sure there's other ones that are even wider, but that's still pretty good and fairly average. But what did you get with that? Well, you get fantastic, not only sharp images because it's a four by five lens, but you get amazing bokeh. And I think that's the beauty of using a camera like this. You can take Instax film, which you typically see with really crappy plastic lenses, and you get something that looks significantly better. There are challenges, of course. Instax film is not the sharpest film out there. In fact, I would say it's not really that sharp. But when you pair it with a lens like this, you're really maximizing the potential of that film because this lens can bring in so much light. And of course, being that it's giving you that four by five look, when you open up the lens and get close to your subject, your background just goes completely creamy and soft. And it's unique because you're not gonna get that on a typical Instax camera. So I absolutely love it for this. I wouldn't take this to go out and shoot, um, you know, landscapes, for example. I feel like it's almost a waste. This is more fun to take photos of people with, whether you're hanging out or whether you're doing an actual shoot. I think people are the ones that really benefit here when it comes to the look. And like I said, the bokeh, Call me a Boca Ho or whatever you want, but ultimately Boca on Instax very quickly and instantaneously like that, it's just an incredible experience. This camera, you know, obviously doesn't come out of the box like this. So if you're up for it, I have a link down below that shows you the entire process that Albert did in order to convert this. If you've got 3D printing skills, if you've got, you know, some kind of handy skills with the cameras and tools, you can most likely recreate this very, very easily. I can't do that. So I'm very thankful that Albert hooked me up. But obviously there are other cameras that exist right now that you can buy that have you know these kind of features. For example, they're the Mint cameras. This camera functions basically the same as this one. It's got its instant back, it's got bellows, it's got a good lens, but I still find that this operationally is amazing. This doesn't have a meter, but honestly, I think with Instax, you wanna meter yourself because if you let the kind of small meter that's on the camera do it, it's not really gonna let you pick you know what you're trying to expose for. Instax is notoriously not have a lot of latitude. And because of that, it's better that you meter for something specific, whether it's the shadows or the highlights. So I still love this package, even though there's no meter on it. In fact, I prefer that there is no meter. Um, the range finder, as I mentioned, is fully functional, which a lot of the Instax hacks that you see out there, they don't have range finders and you have to kind of zone focus or you have to remove the back, you know, get your focus with the camera on a tripod and then put the back back on and then take your image. That's how I used to do it with the four x five camera, which you can see in the video that I put up here. 
but and that's great i'm not dissing that at all but this is just one step better it removes all those kind of extra steps this is basically a point and shoot 4x5 camera because of the fact that you've got the rangefinder and because of the fact that the film is iso 800 so your shutter speeds you know can basically be very usable unless the light gets really really dark so it's just an amazing all-in-one package all right y'all that's the video for today if you enjoyed it definitely go ahead and like it in the button down below and of course subscribe we got a whole big community here and i'm like i want to make it even bigger so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already all right y'all to the next video i'm out